Welcome to the solution key for the worksheet that I gave to you. Uh, I grouped them into three different parts. There's the straightforward one, which is this video lecture, uh, one with a few twists, and one that's a little more sophisticated that'll let you work with Miro zygotes. So hopefully you've had a chance to try these exercises because I think just hearing an explanation without sort of struggling through it first is not your best course of action. And uh, then you can look at these videos to better assess whether or not you understand it. And I'll, I'll make my thinking uh, verbal as I go through these examples. So uh, I'm going to pause it here. You should start it yourself. Uh, or you should pause and, and go try the worksheet yourself if you haven't already done so, and then hit the play key. Okay, so the first example is this. We've got a, an operon here that's quite normal. I've got different kinds of media that we're going to grow these bacteria in. Uh, one media doesn't have any lactose or glucose. One has lactose but no glucose, and one has lactose and has glucose. And these columns represent the different gene products that I want you to assess for. Beta-galactosidase is the protein that comes from the LAC-Z locus, right there, and the LAC-Y is for permease, which is a protein that allows the lactose to come inside. Now the first thing I want to point out is that uh, this is a leaky operon, and the term leaky means that even when we repress the operon, we still make some of the products. We need a little bit of permease available, and we need a little beta-galactosidase available under all circumstances because the beta-galactosidase doesn't only break down the lactose, but it also converts lactose into allolactose, which is the actual inducer for the lac operon. Now, um, the leakiness uh, is not something that we're going to deal with in this question, but I do want you to know that uh, part of the theory. Now I want you to fill out this table using these symbols. A minus sign if there's no protein product made at all, and uh, even if it's leaky, I'm going to call that no protein product. I'm going to take a shortcut with that. Uh, basically I'm saying very minimal, you know, the smallest amount you can imagine. Uh, some protein product is going to be a plus sign, and if we stimulate this with positive regulation, we get lots of protein. And you will recall, perhaps, that positive regulation occurs under circumstances where the glucose is absent. So I'm just going to put a little arrowhead by these guys to remind us that that's going to correspond to the double plus um, representation of the answer. So I think that's all the background you need. Let's see what we uh, should look at first. Let's try a, a straightforward, no-nonsense example where all of the parts of the operon are working. I've got my repressor protein. I've got a promoter, operator, the Z ORF, which is making the beta-galactosidase, and the Y ORF, that'll make the permease. Now what'll happen is this repressor protein can bind over here to the operator under circumstances where there's no lactose present. Remember, lactose changes the shape of the repressor protein. It's allosteric shape change. And it can cause the repressor protein to fall off of the operator. The promoter is where the RNA polymerase will bind. And notice that that occurs in front of the operator region, so that when the operator is bound, we're not able to move from the promoter to the other regions. It, it actually overlaps the promoter a little bit and prevents binding altogether, but it doesn't matter. Um, now, what we're going to look at is a situation where lactose is absent. So if lactose is absent, it'll change the shape of the repressor protein, and it won't be able to bind onto the operator. And that means we're not going to make either beta-galactosidase or permease. And that's appropriate. I, I'm saying no protein product. There'd be just the, the, the slightest hint of it, but not enough for me to put a plus sign. If I add lactose, though, then I'm going to remove the repressor protein from the operator, and we're going to transcribe through, and we are going to make both beta-galactosidase and permease. And that's going to happen under both glucose conditions here. Keep hitting my right button, so pardon the fly out. Come on, you. All right. So that's well and good. I've got most of the answer here, but the important thing is the difference between glucose being absent and glucose being present. Now, if glucose is present, we're going to repress the amount of cyclic AMP that we make, and that means that we're going to have less positive regulation, or essentially no positive regulation. So although we'll get a little bit of the protein product made, it's not an awful lot. 
In circumstances where the glucose isn't present, we're going to have an increase in the cyclic AMP. There's that enzyme called adenylyl cyclase that makes cyclic AMP, and the presence of glucose inhibits it. So when we have low glucose, we have high cyclic AMP, and if that's the case, it follows that we're going to have a lot of CAP, CAMP complex, cyclic AMP. I know my writing's a little blocky here. It's the way the computer renders it. So the CAP CAMP complex is good for positive regulation. So we're going to make more protein under these circumstances. So in this column, you need to put in two plus signs. We would also do that over here if we made any protein, but we're going to assume that the repression is complete. Here's the second example. Now, in this case, I don't have a repressor protein working. That's what the minus sign means. And so if we don't have any repressor protein, we can't ever bind onto the operator. And that means that even when lactose is absent, we're still going to transcribe. We're going to put protein product there. So this is constitutive. We have it on all the time. And I'll talk about constitutive in my next video a little bit more. Now, the important addition we do on here is under circumstances where we don't have any glucose, we put a second plus sign onto this. That's not a good plus sign. That's better. That's better. And there we go. There's a complete answer for B. We don't have a repressor protein, therefore we can't turn this off. We're going to express under all circumstances, and more so when there's no glucose available. This example has a perfectly good repressor protein, it's an I+, but the operator is messed up. Now that is exactly the same phenotype as this other example. Even though we have a perfectly good repressor protein, it's not able to recognize this because the nucleotide sequence is missing. And I'm going to talk about this letter C in the next video. Well, if we can't bind onto it, it has the exact same phenotype as we just put in the line above. So I'm just going to put all these in two pluses in cases where there's glucose absent because we have positive regulation upregulating this and regular transcription when glucose is present. No positive regulation is available. Now finally, this is a normal operator, we or operon, a normal operon except that we have def a defective Y gene, the, the permease. So I'm going to put a minus sign here because I don't have the capability of making permease. Now, the repressor protein can bind onto the operator, and so when lactose is absent, we do have binding occurring in that region. So I'm going to put a minus sign there. In cases where I put lactose in, the repressor protein will lift up off of the operator, and we will have transcription occurring. So it'll happen under both of these circumstances. And over here, over here, we have glucose absent, which means we have positive regulation. So notice that in both columns where we have glucose ab absent, we're going to put in two plus signs for all circumstances. But make sure you read these headings, because if I give you this question on an exam, I may be asking you to um, be reading it and, and, and responding appropriately. So don't just memorize how this works. The reason I've done a video of the way I think about solving these is because I want you to be able to apply what you're looking at. So that concludes this first part of the three videos. Do try the other ones. Go and revise your, your answers as necessary and see how you do and check them against my answers.